Before I begin this review proper, I must give a special thank you to Smoked Salmon, PTPix1, Peppo, Emma, EastCujo411, and Juiced Erdman's Officiel. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, for their amazing support, words of encouragement, and for creating and cultivating a Discord server for Xenotaku. I could not have asked for a greater surprise, and I don't know how to properly express my gratitude. You're all way too much, but truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you want to join and hang out, a link to the server is in the description. In the meantime, enjoy the review. Every form of media has franchises or trends that gain popular attention, with some that end up spanning years or even decades of near-continuous material and release. As much as there can be a certain level of pride in saying that you were there at the beginning when an anime trend started, it doesn't change the fact that for many, they end up being a little late to the party. That could be because they simply didn't see it when it came out, or because they hadn't yet become an anime fan at the time that the animated franchise got its start. It took me until 2017 before I started watching anime with some semblance of regularity, and it wasn't until last November that I actually committed myself more wholly to regular viewing. As such, Love Live School Idol Project and the Love Live franchise as a whole was one such entity that I completely missed the boat on when it first came out. Truth be told, I was slightly hesitant when I finally decided to give School Idol Project a whirl. Barring my wariness towards music anime, I'm also not terribly fond of pop music. I don't have anything against it, and some I really like, but it's definitely not one of the genres that I gravitate towards when I listen to music on my own time. So, in a manner of speaking, I was challenging myself with this one. Due to a lack of applicants, the Otono Kizaka Academy High School is set to be closed down. One student, Kosaka Honaka, is saddened at the school's potential closure, and tries coming up with a way to save it. One day, she sees a performance of an idol group called Arise from another school, and sees how popular they are. Being inspired by their act, she sets out to create a school idol group for the academy, hoping it will drum up enough enthusiasm to boost enrollment. Roping in her two friends Minami Kotori and Sonada Umi, the three friends form their group called Muse, but will soon realize that forming an idol group is not all having fun. They'll have to deal with all kinds of resistance to their progress, both from within the school and from other idol groups that are trying to make their presence known. Love Live School Idol Project boasts a massive ensemble for its main cast. Counting Honaka, Umi, and Kotori, there are nine total girls that get involved in Muse. As one might unfortunately expect from a cast of this size, not every character is given an appropriate amount of time in the sun to flesh out their personalities. The main trio get more than enough since they've been involved from the beginning, as do a few others, but some like Hoshizora Rin and Nishiki no Maki don't have too much to their characters. That's not to say that nothing happens to them, but rather that the underlying substance is sparser compared to the rest of the group. The anime also has the time-honored tradition with Hayase Eri, the student council president who, for one reason or another, opposes the group's existence. You can see it coming from a mile away that she'll end up joining Muse at some point. Even for the characters whose personalities don't stand out as much against the other eight, the dynamic of Muse worked to salvage some of the shortcomings. While the characters may fall into predictable archetypes, it rarely took away from the sense that I did enjoy watching them. It didn't matter whether there were scenes involving all nine members, or if they were split off into different, smaller groups. They bounce off of one another well. Part of this is because there are several running jokes throughout the series that lend themselves well to comedic gags and payoffs, such as the fact that Nico has a habit of getting ignored pretty often, and Honaka always having room in her stomach for bread. Not all of their dialogue is full of the encouraging remarks that could all too easily bog down the narrative. Oftentimes, the characters will call each other out on being lazy. This factors into the plots for a few episodes, which is a relief that the show actually has some realistic tension for music groups. One of the greatest aspects of the series is that the characters are shown several times, either in montage or in larger portions, actively practicing and working to make themselves better. A pet peeve of mine with all entertainment shows, and especially ones involving music, is that not nearly enough time is given to the group or individuals working to better themselves, making the eventual performances feel contrived rather than earned. 
Love Live School Idol Project thankfully avoids this pitfall, as seeing the girls actively work feeds the desire to watch them succeed. As they move along that path to either success or defeat, Love Live School Idol Project offers few surprises in its predictable story, but even so, it was able to provide some satisfactions. The first season ended in a way that I did not anticipate, making it stand out in my memory compared to other shows, while the latter half of season two seemed like a perfectly sensible plot given the overarching context involved, even if the amount of time practicing seemed less than before. By the time season two was done, I felt that, at least with this particular group of girls, the series had done everything that it wanted to do, and needed to do. If the series had ended there, it would have been a good place to put things to rest. It wasn't anything noteworthy or stellar, but it was fine. But that's not where things ended. A Love Live School Idol Project movie was released afterwards, continuing the story from the cliffhanger at the end of the TV series. It makes the mistake, however, of largely repeating the latter half of Season 2's plot, causing some of the tension to feel wholly unnecessary. Though that portion of the series, I would argue, was the best portion both dramatically and musically, the fact is, we just handled this. We don't need to do it again. The overarching metaphor about flying and the strange woman who Honaka is taken with don't quite achieve the heights that they were trying to reach. But to the movie's defense, the comedy was good, the animation was the best it had been at that point, and there were definitely moments where I was smiling. The film is not bad, but rather just makes the series overstay its welcome, and as such, I do feel is the series' weakest portion. Though it may have ended without the narrative money note that it was aspiring to reach, it consistently managed to do well with the actual music sequences. Not every song is a home run, as there were only three that I thought hit the bullseye perfectly, yet even among the ones that weren't as memorable or I didn't like as much, they still made for nice listenings. There weren't any songs in the series that made me want to turn down the volume, which, considering just how much music is featured both by Muse and others, is a notable feat. Therefore, the songs that did manage to win me over, really won me over. The choreography and dance sequences were also well planned, and the fact that Muse has nine members actually worked toward the music sequence's benefit. Because there are so many moving people involved in these sequences, it makes the physical performative affect of the dances feel more satisfying. The 3D animation did need a bit of time before it could gel the way it was intended to, struggling with that slightly artificial look that so often plagues the style, but by the time the series got to Season 2, it had more or less gotten the needed handle on it. The music sequences also best exemplify what Love Live School Idol Project longed to achieve, and that was a sense of fun and energy. Be it through the comedic goings-on with Muse, or tapping your foot to the music playing, the series seeks to leave its viewer with the feeling that they had a good time. While I cannot say that I was smiling throughout the whole thing, there were moments where I was aware of just how much I liked what I was seeing and listening to. In that sense, it succeeded more often than it didn't. It isn't attempting to be the next high-level anime drama, and that's perfectly okay. Love Live School Idol Project is a nice heart-in-the-right-place romp of music and dance, having a good ensemble cast with decent chemistry and some musical moments that soared. While the story runs out of steam by the end and not every character or song is quite memorable, it's a series that embodies fun such that it can, to an extent, make up for some of its problems. The fact that I liked this series gave me the incentive to watch the currently airing Love Live Superstar, so it doesn't look like my tour with this franchise is done just yet. If the series still doesn't quite seem like your cup of tea, then I at least encourage you to give the song Snow Halation a listen. I thought it was far too good to go unheard. In its entirety, I give Love Live School Idol Project a 7 out of 10.